So the interesting thing about uh, this is that there were a number of compelling events. I don't suppose you could describe what it is that sort of uh, came along and collided and made you make this decision. Um, yes, there were a couple of compelling events. Um, one was the desire to take more control of our website. Um, originally, it had been contracted out to a third party who developed and maintained it and hosted it. Uh, we want to have a bit more control and drive events forward for ourselves, you know, push functionality that we, we wanted to get out there. Uh, the second event was actually our provider coming to us and saying that uh, they were no longer uh, able to provide and host for our website. So that kind of pushed us into looking out into the marketplace for, for a new home for our website. There were some features in Azure which attracted you and drove you down this development route. Could you just describe what they are? The nature of our business is we have predictable times within the calendar that we're going to have a lot more load on our servers. Yeah. So for, uh, we have festivals that go on such as Royal Ascot, yeah. uh, Cheltenham Festival, Breeders' Cup, yeah. and we know that we're going to have more demand on our servers. Uh, and the planned year, two years in front, so we know uh, when to expect this load yeah. so that we can then get ready. We often do microsites for these uh, these festivals, yeah. so there's a microsite that on top of the main site as well. So yeah. it's a predictable burst that we can have, we know that we can handle. And uh, I know that one of the areas that interests you, Brett, uh, is the unpredictable nature of customers. Well, well that's it. I mean, sometimes we can have things like, you know, big stories break on the site, um, get a lot of demands, people that, you know, see it in the news as well, yeah. come to our site to read these stories. Um, the nature of Azure is we can uh, spin up new instances very, very quickly. Yeah. The management console, you go on, increase the number of instances, you cope with the demand straight away. But I mean, the thing is, we use a lot of monitoring tools as well to see how various servers are coping, so we know right. when that points reach, you know, so we can hit it before we start hitting problems on the website, Yeah, and that's obviously very useful to yeah. us. Uh, and then once people have been to the site, got the news they need, yeah. and then scale it back down as uh, the demand goes back to normal. Yeah, so if you can scale down as quickly as you, as you can mm -hmm. scale up, then it keeps the, the actual cost of the, of the uh, service down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that was one of the things that drove us as well, was um, we did go to up to the market to look at other hosting providers, mm -hmm. right? Um, and because they, you know, you set up for a set number of servers, yeah. they could be sat for 70% unproductive you yeah. know, a lot of the time, yeah. so you're paying for um, usage you're not using. Yeah. So that's the kind of the useful thing with Azure as well, is the way you can actually just pay for what you're using. You know, whereas I suppose on the on-premise sites, you know, you've got set up for 12 servers, you're stuck with them for no matter what. Okay, Andy, could you just explain to us you know, the site, what it looks like, how it feels, what, what kind of experience a customer would have? Sure. Um, we get um, lots and lots of information from various um, partners and teams, yeah. and whether that be racing information, which you'd expect, yeah. so providing race cards, fixtures, yeah. results. We also have an odds feed um, to provide an odds grid to gaming partners. Yeah. Um, on the, and we also have um, a video feed on there to provide subscription information yeah. and display that. So this is a really heavily data-driven site, isn't it? So it's, yes. I mean, um, we get so much information, and you can display it in so many different ways and we have um, competitors out there who charge for like do charge for it but we actually yeah. provide for free and we try to display it in a way that's as logical to use whether it be a um, racing enthusiast who's been in racing for 25 years or something yeah. brand new brand new to racing yeah okay and we need to do it in a, in a logical theme we make money by advertising and also um, through the gaming partners affiliate um, links and deals right okay and we actually because we provide such a wealth of information we have people come to the site and I just say because it's free, we have more people coming. So, for yeah, example, yeah. We, you know, we have tipsters, and tipsters, essentially, they try to give an indication of um, who they think um, is going to win on that day. Right. And okay. then by providing that information, say for Royal Ascot, um, we have a tipster called Hugh Taylor who will say we think Golden Cove is going to win um, a race. Yeah. And then we provide links through to the gaming partners, and those okay, things yeah. then yeah. generate that revenue. Okay, so it's been really interesting to hear about this site and, and the way that you've developed it. Uh, you've built the site on Azure, you know, what, what are the main things that it's given you? The control it's given us, the fact that we now know that coming up to say Breeders Cup, yeah. which is coming in, in the next couple of months, we know that site traffic is going to increase by 50, 60 percent. Yeah. This year we don't need to worry about that, we don't need to do weeks of planning against that event. We know when it's there, we know we can schedule Azure to, to just grow out. Yeah. and meet that demand. Yeah. So it's also, you know, there's a comfort factor in that as well. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what, what about you guys? What, what kind of things do you feel you get from it? It's a very stable platform to okay. deliver against, yeah. uh, so that we know if 
when we are delivering but it'll work on there we don't have to worry about whether or not how the servers are set up yeah. if there's a feature available for us we know what we're getting out of the box and we know that it's consistent out of the box yeah. so that we don't have a server that's always a little bit flaky it is the same on there and on the next one okay because so. the service level agreement you get is 99.95 percent uptime what, what have you actually achieved with your site 100% so yeah. Okay, right. So, so far we've had no service outages or interruptions whatsoever. Okay. Uh, it's it's very it's pleasing so far. The experience has, um, it, it's, it's been, I think it's been excellent. Well, Go Live was, Go Lives are always uh, yeah, stressful. Yeah. Yeah. And we've been, between us, we've been through so many. Uh, yeah. This has got to have been the smoothest Go Live. Yeah, I think the hardest thing. part was from the third party we were taking over from uh, there and they, Kind of had to roll back, so we had to roll back. But it was quite easy for us to roll back, wasn't it, at the time? Absolutely. So then, when it came to actually go live, our part from from our point of view was uh, simple, really. It was. It was literally just flicking a switch, making yeah. sure okay. everything's there, and, and it was. And yeah. it's, it says a trust. Yeah. We kind of do trust that it's doing its job properly. Okay, that's good. So. I mean, the other thing I think the site as yours came as kind of a lot of challenges. You know, it was, that was kind of the fun part of being yeah. developers. Yeah. As you know, it's kind of one thing that we like. So. It's kind of how we had to integrate. Yeah. You know, the we had to take. There's no file system as such, so it's how we had to deal with that sort of thing. Um, Running classic ASP on the site, you can't get that out of the box. So how do we do that? Yeah. Okay. UTC dates on the servers. Yeah, because we're very date dependent. Yeah, and we're just glad we launched in the summer because then we realised there was an issue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. But we look because come October, right? We'd go into the office and go, actually that. Dates, you know, we're an hour out or something. So, can you just explain there. what that issue is with, with UTC? The or the data server, or the data centers all running UTC to okay. run for us. No matter where they are in the world. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but our data is so uh, event driven that yeah. we need to know what the date, in, the time is in the UK for yeah. that. So, yeah. if we're in British summertime, it's yeah. different from UTC. So, yeah. potentially we're an hour out or yeah. So we have we had to manage that. So yeah. What can I, what the, FTC? The, the challenges around things that we used to have um, scripts working on on the websites, the console scripts. Mm. How do we use those now? And actually, it was quite easy converting those into worker roles. Okay. So yeah. that, that encapsulated that. There was yeah. also uh, SQL Azure, no SQL agent. So we had yeah. to write our own scheduling oh, I see. job. Yeah. So yeah. it's running okay. scripts on the databases and on the database at yeah. a certain time. So we, there's nothing at the moment that was suitable for us. So we had to write our own worker role that looks into table storage that says I'm going to fire this store procedure off at this set interval. Yeah, so that makes it very easy to configure as well because it is just basically something site and table storage. So we maybe found that having had to write these things, they actually become easier to manage. And when okay. we've the same sort of jobs coming up again, yeah. it's, um, just add a new job and it's there. And yeah. it's, you know, I guess one of the frustrating it. things though is that you, know, uh, you could go away and develop something and then six months later, Microsoft releases that as part of the platform, and you've sort of put all that effort in. But yes. that's, I guess, that's the, that's the challenge with the new platform, like Azure. It's only yeah. been a, it's only been really in commercial release now for about a year, just over a year, is it? I think. Um, it is, but what it's done now also, it's driven us to learn more about the platform. Okay. Yeah. So you know, I think we have much more knowledge mm. about what the platform does and what it can do. So right. we know that when it comes time for us to redevelop the website for the ground you know, from the ground up. Specifically for that platform, yeah, we're going to be well prepared. Yeah, okay. There wasn't any fundamental um, wholesale changes, which is great. From, so behind the scenes, I think these guys are working yeah. very hard. Whilst, whilst, <laughs> we were, whilst we were designing how to move on to Azure, we took yeah. Andy's working uh, practices yeah. into place, and how can we best minimise the disruption to the team to to upload CSS, XSL files, okay, things like yeah. that. So yeah. it's how you could deploy it in a package, but then obviously if you made a change, you then have to keep. Uh, redeploying that package or yeah. come up with another mechanism and that's what we did we came yeah. up with uh, table storage. Okay. Well, storage so I came with problems all the time <laughs> yeah, yeah well the <laughs> thing is though that although there were challenges what we found out is the, none of them were insurmountable okay they were, they were yeah. always there was always a solution there yeah uh, and to be honest we went out to the community a few times as well oh, yes, to yeah. see what people were, were trying and what yeah. they were doing I mean, yeah. I took lessons from that yeah you know, there's, there's questions on Stack Overflow from us that the communities then reply back saying, yeah, you need to look at this, you need to look at that, and, yeah. you know, or why are you doing it this way? Kind of okay, thing. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a lot of video blogs as well. I mean, what's one, this is it. There's Cloud Cover. Cloud Cover. Uh, okay, Steve yeah. Marks. Yeah, Steve um, Marks. Um, 
but I mean, it's, yeah, there's a lot of, if you look for it, there's a lot of good advice as well as bad advice. So. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. We've tried both. <laughs> yeah. 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 We started bad yeah. advice, then got to the good advice. I mean, like, for example, the FTP uh, solution that we, we went down originally yeah. wasn't suitable for us. Um, okay. So we actually went onto an on-premise version of FTP. So then, um, yeah, and all that does is just sling the data into a HTTP post method that we just capture in the cloud and do it yeah. that way. Yeah. So basically, it's just really it's like a black like a sling box on it. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Flings it on. So and that was only really a challenge because um, our, our provider partner wasn't able to do a HTTP post at, at the time, but eventually right. they will do. So that'll even go yeah. away as, a, as an issue. Yeah. Okay. Great, okay. Thanks for your time. It's been really interesting to hear about this and uh, I hope the, the site goes on to be even more of a success. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thanks.